Hello everyone, my name is Pixlriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to look at farming some animals and a few crops as well. So the first thing we're going to do is step into our house, grab the crafting table, and we're going to make a stone hoe using two wood and two cobblestone. You can make a wooden hoe as well, but a stone hoe will have a little bit more durability. We're going to break a bunch of the grass around here, and the grass will drop wheat seeds. Once we've collected a decent handful of wheat seeds, I've got 12 of those here, we need to find some water to plant them next to. If you've already found some iron, you might be able to make yourself a bucket so you can move the water to a slightly closer location. But right now, I don't have any iron, so we're going to make our first wheat farm at the base of one of these waterfalls. Right here on this sunflower plains actually seems like a good spot. The water's running down into this little gully here. We're going to right-click the ground with the hoe. This will create a patch of farmland, and any of the farmland that's near water should start to hydrate, which will allow crops to grow here more effectively. We are going to plant all of the wheat seeds that we've got and we get the advancement a CD place for doing that. I might punch the grass around here to get a few more wheat seeds since we did carve out a larger farm plot than we had the seeds for and slowly but surely the wheat will start to grow. Now we filled up this wheat field it's a waiting game but if you have some bones from killing skeletons during the night you can break those down into bone meal which will instantly grow the crops a couple of stages. If I right click on this a couple of times it'll grow through a few stages until it becomes this golden mature wheat which we can harvest by breaking it, getting one sheaf of wheat and a bunch of wheat seeds that we can replant. Usually takes two or three bone meal to grow a crop to full maturity, so we're going to do that a second time, and now we have enough wheat seeds that we can start another farm somewhere else, and we have two wheat. The wheat here will stop growing if we get too far away, but as long as we stay within a certain radius of this little farm, it's going to keep growing, so I can safely wander off, and our next objective is to find some sheep or cows. There are already lots of sheep around here, so we will start with those, and you'll notice that if you're holding wheat in your hand when you approach a sheep, they'll start to follow you. A lot of the animals in Minecraft, the passive farm animal types, can be led around using certain types of food. Sheep and cows like wheat, chickens follow you if you're holding seeds, rabbits are interested in carrots and dandelions, and pigs will follow you if you've got a carrot or a potato. If you walk away too fast though, they will lose interest and wander off, so it's important to keep an eye on these sheep as you are herding them towards your eventual goal. Down here close to our wheat farm, we're going to create a pen to keep these sheep sheep in. Makes sense to build it next to the wheat farm since we'll be using the wheat to feed and breed them, so we'll make a few fences using our crafting recipe book here. I only had enough fences for a 4x4 pen, so the sheep are going to be kind of crammed in right now, but we'll expand the fence a little bit later. If we walk up onto this crafting table, once the, <laughs> the sheep is going to push me out of the way, we'll stand in the pen and they should start to follow you in. Just got to do a bit of maneuvering, wait for them to walk up onto the crafting table and they'll follow you in. And once they're in here, they should not be able to get back out. Unfortunately, neither can you, because fences are technically one and a half blocks high, even though they only render one block high. And the player can only jump slightly over the height of a block, meaning you can't just straight up jump over a fence. So we're going to take out this corner fence and quickly quickly replace it before the sheep know what's up, and the sheep are now here in the pen. Once we've gathered some wool, we'll make some carpets, which will actually act as a style. But I'll show you something else you can do in the meantime. Let's take down this oak tree here so we have a little bit of fresh wood to work with. I'm going to break the leaves to disconnect them from this tree here, and that means the leaves should start to decay because they're not near a wood block. And using our crafting table, we can craft a fence gate. We'll break a fence and replace it with the fence gate, and by interacting with the fence gate, you can open and close it, meaning you can get in and out of the sheep pen. You'll also have noticed it started raining, which we can't do anything about until night falls. At that point, we can sleep in a bed, the rain will clear up, and we'll have nice sunny weather again. Now the next day has arrived, we're going to create an identical farm for some cows. But first, we're going to plant some of these saplings so that the trees here will regrow, and we can harvest some wood from them when they're fully grown. I've made another animal enclosure opposite this one with the sheep, and it's got a fence gate right here ready to receive some cows. There are a couple of cows up on this hilltop, so we're going to lure them to us, once again holding wheat in our hands. And once the cows have followed us down from the hillside, we can close the fence gate behind them, and they are in here. Our little patch of wheat has grown in the meantime, none of it is quite ready to harvest yet, but it's time to talk about breeding animals. If you interact with one of these animals whilst holding some wheat in your hand, you'll notice heart particles appear, and if you do the same with another animal, the two of them will look at each other, they will breed, 
And in this case, a baby cow will be born, along with a bit of experience for us and an achievement for breeding our first animals. Baby animals will basically take a full Minecraft day to grow up into a full-size animal. The parents will need five minutes to cool down from breeding. I believe this is slightly different on Bedrock Edition, but here on Java Edition they need five minutes, and then you'll be able to breed them again, provided you've got the wheat to do it. And while we wait for the wheat to grow, we might want to expand the animal pen a little bit, because we're going to have more sheep and cows in here in a moment. You'll also notice that my axe is starting to wear down a little bit, and if I break any more wood with this, it's going to break permanently. So we'll have to go and grab the materials we need to craft another axe. I'll just get three cobblestone from over here in this cliff face, and when I pick up this crafting table, the axe is going to break, but that's fine, because we just made another one. Now we've got a couple of extra wheat from our wheat farm. Here's the cool thing about breeding together sheep. Sheep's wool can be dyed different colours. We can grab some red tulips to make red dye. We'll grab one of these dandelions down here to make yellow dye. And interacting with the sheep whilst holding dye will dye the wool of this one red and the wool of this one yellow. When we breed these two sheep together, you'll notice that their offspring can have the combination of those two colours of wool. We get an orange sheep. So instead of having to combine those two dyes to make orange dye, you can just breed two sheep together. And when you kill the sheep or shear them, you will get wool of that colour. In total, there are 16 colours of sheep, so that's a challenge, <laughs> try and get them all. In the meantime, one of our oak trees has grown from a sapling into a full-size tree, so we can start chopping that down, replant the saplings again, and along with the cows, the sheep, and the wheat patch, we are now farming wood as well. Stick around for the rest of the video, where I'll explain why I'm farming animals so early, instead of running off and getting more precious resources. Hey folks, welcome back. So one of the reasons it's really important to start farming animals like this, breeding them together instead of just killing every cow and sheep you see on site, is that the game will repopulate an area with animals, but it'll do it kind of slowly. A lot of the animals will spawn here on world generation, so they'll be here when you first load the chunks, but after you've killed them, sometimes they take a little while to come back, and it's very easy to run out of food that way. Of course, the wheat we are farming can also be turned into bread and a few other recipes that can sustain a player, but it's a good idea to have a source of food before you go on your first major caving expedition. And right now, I've only got a couple of steak and a couple of pork chops to my name. We want to be geared up with a little more food than that. The other really important thing we're doing right now is tree farming, and it's important to get hold of a bunch of logs before you go anywhere as well, because as I mentioned before, you do need wood for a lot of stuff. You need wood for the handles of every type of tool, from wooden pickaxes all the way up to diamond and netherite pickaxes. You might need to make a crafting table on the fly if you've forgotten where you left yours. You might need to make torches when you go caving, because you'll need to light up the area and prevent mobs from spawning. Before we dive into the world of caving, it's going to be important to get prepared. So that's why we're setting up animal farms and farming some wood before we think about going underground. With that said, it'll be a lot easier to set up wheat farms slightly closer closer to the house once we can move the water source around with a bucket, and it will also be possible to collect milk from the cows. If we have iron, we can create shears to shear the sheep and get more wool without killing them. There will be lots of benefits to going caving and at least finding some iron, so we're going to aim to do that in our next video. But for now, before all of that action happens, I'm kind of enjoying taking things at a slightly slower pace. Since we've got the seeds for it, we can turn a bit more of this hillside into a wheat farm, and there are a couple of other things you should know about farming crops. First of all, once it gets gets five blocks away from a source of water, farmland will not be able to hydrate. It won't just be hydrated by the farmland next to it. So it's important to remember that you need water around for the crops to grow properly. These seeds right here are going to grow a lot slower than the rest of the wheat in this patch, which has hydrated farmland. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you jump onto a piece of farmland, it will revert back into a dirt block and that will break whatever crops are growing there, popping them off and dropping them as items you can pick up. You will need to till the soil and turn it back into farmland before you can replant anything there, but that's a good way of getting rid of farmland you don't want anymore. Just something to be aware of if your farm is on a hillside like this. You don't want to walk off a block and suddenly trample all your crops. It looks like the orange sheep has grown up, but the cow over here hasn't, even though we bred these cows first. And that's because sheep can actually speed up their growth by eating grass frequently, which they do anyway to replenish their wool. Sheep can't be sheared until they have grown up, the same way cows can't be milked until they have grown up. So we're not going to be able to gather everything from sheep as soon as we breed them like that. Another thing it would be really useful to do is craft a storage chest and leave it somewhere around these animals. That way you can keep some wheat nearby if you want to come back and breed the animals regularly. And if your wheat farm ends up too far away from your animal farms, well at least you can bring all of the wheat with you in one go and not have to make the trek so often. On the flip side of everything I just told you about making sure you breed the animals instead of killing them all in a certain area, once you've started breeding the animals you should have a virtually unlimited 
limited supply of them, so it's safe enough to go out and kill any sheep or cows that you see in the wild, knowing you've got a bunch of them back home. And I'm going to do that since we don't have access to shears yet, just so I can get a couple of pieces of wool and show you a neat trick. Because when your cows and sheep are running around inside of these pens, you'll notice that sometimes you'll open a fence gate and the sheep will just walk on out of here. If you're going in and out to breed them or feed them, yeah, sooner or later they are just going to walk right out of the pen and you might not have any wheat to guide them back in again. Or alternatively, you're trying to guide them back in again with the wheat, but then the ones that are inside the pen run out towards you because you're holding wheat and the whole thing becomes a bit of a debacle. So instead of a fence gate, I will humbly suggest using carpet. You can grab two wool from nearby sheep, turn those into a carpet and place the carpet on top of any of the fences surrounding your animal enclosure. This will create a little platform that you can hop up onto, but the sheep will have no interest in pathfinding over, meaning they won't leave the pen, they won't be able to jump up onto this the way players can, and it just makes the process of farming animals a lot easier. You can get in and out of the animal pens this way with no problem, except maybe if the sheep push you around a little bit. But we're going to do exactly the same thing over here with the cow pen because cows are also mischievous and like to get out from time to time. You get three carpet from two wool blocks, so we'll put that in there just in case we need another one in future. And incidentally, if you want to add any more animals to a pen like this, a really easy way of doing that is to get the sheep or cow or whatever it is to follow you, place a few temporary blocks around the outside side of it so they're connected to the fence and then just let the animal walk over those so they make their way into the pen. Then you can just use the carpet on the corner to hop back out again, break those temporary blocks and the animals are in the pen no problem. Returning to our wheat field, once again you will see that the crops over here have grown a lot faster than these ones on the unhydrated farmland. That'll be a lot easier to deal with once we can move water around using a bucket. And these pens do feel a little bit small, even for the small amount of cows and sheep that we have in here. And trust me, we're going to want to move them out into larger accommodation soon, but we're going to save building a barn for the animals for another episode. And right now that's mostly because it's a little time consuming to gather wood when all we have is a stone axe. We need some tool upgrades before we can think about the longer term building opportunities of this world. If you want to expand a wheat field around a natural water source like this, but you don't have access to a bucket yet, we can break a few blocks along here and channel the water down a small water course. But once it's flowed down over a block, or if it's flowing from a water source like the one up there, water will only flow for eight blocks before it has to drop another block to continue. So this right here is about as far as this water will go. However, that does mean that some of the these blocks over here, some of the farmland here, is going to be closer to some water, which will mean that a couple of those patches there will end up becoming hydrated again, and we can expand the wheat farm around this area because there's water right close by. Also, a nice easy way of getting hold of some bone meal if you're impatient and you want the crops to grow a little faster is to wait until just after nightfall once some of the hostile monsters start to spawn in the world around us. I'm going to get up on the roof to see if I can spot any skeletons spawning. There's definitely some zombies around here. So skeletons will be spawning out there in the world. We can take out this zombie with a couple of quick critical hits. But now we know hostile mobs are spawning. We can go to sleep for the night. And then when we wake up, we've just got to take a look around at who is burning. There's a couple of skeletons and zombies burning in the sunlight now, and we don't even need to run up to the skeleton. It will just die naturally. And then we can run up and see if it's dropped any bones, which it has. So you can collect bones nice and easily without having to even lift a finger against these skeletons. Once again, and spiders in full daylight like this will become passive, but since this spider is here, I might as well kill that as well. It's going to become hostile to me once it knows I'm attacking it, but oh, unfortunately that one didn't drop anything. At least we got some bones that we can use to fertilize our farm. A couple of these wheat stalks have already fully grown, so we're going to break just those and replace them with some seeds. We'll replant the extra seeds we get, and we can tuck this wheat in the chest ready to breed some more sheep and cows. In fact, I might actually breed a couple of these cows since the herd is quite small right now and could do with expanding. We could bring some more cows in from further away as well to increase the numbers here and once you have a bunch of wheat and a bunch of cows it's a lot easier to basically double the size of your herd. Since the wheat is quite happy growing by itself I can also show you that bone meal can be used to grow trees faster as well. If you use the bone meal on this sapling a couple of times that will grow the tree. So similar to the wheat that is a nice easy shortcut to growing trees if you need wood in a hurry. But now we have over half a stack of logs. The maximum we can have in a stack is 64, so we've got 
more than half of that. And now that we have some animals breeding, I'm a little bit happier about the idea of going caving and risking a bit of exploration in search of more precious resources. So join me for the next episode when we will be going caving for the first time. And the last thing I will show you is that if you're unlucky enough not to have any animals to breed with your wheat, you can always turn three sheaves of it into a loaf of bread, which will sustain you not quite as much as the steak will, but you'll get a pretty decent food supply out of that if you've managed to grow a lot of wheat. So that's where we're going to wrap up this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Hopefully you've learned a few things about farming animals and we can get all geared up for our next episode in which we'll be going caving. Thank you so much for watching this episode. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.